Are you afraid? When I was a younger girl, I lived in a cul-de-sac with my parents, and there were tons of people my age living around the area. I didn't know too many of them, as I was a complete coward, and I had a social phobia. I usually stayed inside unless the very few friends I had came over, and even then I'd not leave the house. Somewhere during that slim timeline, something happened that made me question my sanity. I was in bed one night, and woke up. I went to the bathroom down the hall, and when I came back, I heard a low rumbling outside. This was a rumbling that I'd heard before. It was the rumbling of a car or truck. I looked out of my window behind my bed, out of curiosity, and saw someone standing in front of a large truck with the headlights that were shining towards me from the opposite side of the road. I got scared and I crawled into bed and quickly went back to sleep. I woke up the next morning and forgot all about the truck and the person that I'd seen outside. I went about my day, until one of my friends came over to tell me what she had seen that night. She saw a man that stopped in the middle of the road to do something, and then got back in the vehicle to leave. We didn't think it was anything too strange. But we couldn't figure out who it was because no one around here has a truck that fits that description. The next night, I heard the low rumbling of the engine again. I quickly looked out the window to see the same truck and the guy outside of it standing in front of the headlights. I couldn't see too much because of the darkness, but while I was watching whoever the person was, they looked over at me. I closed the curtains and ducked away from the window, out of being startled. Most of me wanted to look back out of the window. I don't know why I did, but when I did, the man was standing in my yard, looking through the window from about 10 feet away. I closed the curtains when I saw him and started freaking out, not knowing who that was or why he was looking through my window. I know he wasn't very scary looking but there's more here to come. I went to bed that night scared that the guy was still out there, but I didn't hear the truck anymore. I asked my friend about it the next day, and she was already asleep by that time. She didn't see anything, but I saw the man again. But this time he was outside with some kid who got into his truck. I didn't know the kid. At some point, the man walked back into my yard and waved at me. I freaked out again and slammed the curtain closed. Was the man out there picking up his son or something? I figured that's what it was, but after that night, I never saw him again. The truck never came back. Later on after all that, I did hear about a kid going missing in my neighborhood and was never found. This was before cell phones as well so there weren't any Amber Alerts that everyone got. I've been trying to dig up news articles on this, but I can't find anything. I don't want to disclose my whereabouts like that as well, because I still live around that area, but since moved a little ways away. I only felt like I was in danger when I saw him, but never at any other time. I also remember my parents trying to hide something from me about it, like they didn't know about it, but I did say something. They told me that I had just been dreaming the whole thing. I can't ask now as they've both passed, but the memory will always be there with me of the guy in the middle of the night. I was in high school when this took place. I walked home every day, but I had to pass a church on my way home. I was a girl who liked to wear skirts that were above the knees, and I would do it because the school allowed it. They told me as long as I was not distracting anyone, or showing up in lewd clothing that I was fine. So on my way home, there was a man who would come out of the church parking lot and harass me. I made it clear to him that I wanted nothing to do with his religion but I was perfectly fine with it. He first tried to preach to me about coming in and being saved, 
but I told him I wasn't interested. That stuff doesn't ring with me. He was very pushy, and he even got a few others to try to talk me into it. But as soon as I told the rest of them that I wasn't interested, they left me alone, and I respected them for it. This man, though, he really wanted me to convert for some reason. He ran to me every day after school and would try and try. I started walking over the next street out of my way, but he'd actively search for me. I asked him why he wanted me to go with him so bad, and the only reason he could come up with that I was a cute girl wandering alone and I needed to come to Jesus. That was a very creepy way of putting it. At certain points, he would criticize the way I dressed then, and told me that I was walking on flames already, trying to attract sinners. He even started calling me a sinner and a heathen. For a good long while, he would just come out of the church to insult me, and tell me that my skirts were a sin, my legs were a sin, and yell hell things at me along with Bible verses that made no sense. Yes, he devolved into yelling at me and insulting me. So a bit of this, and he finally got the bright idea to start following me home in his car, stopping short of my house to drive past it. This was getting out of hand, and this guy needed to be stopped. Before I could come up with a clever way to get rid of him from my path home, he did something hopefully he'll go to hell for. I walked past the church as usual one day, and he drove his car out onto the sidewalk that I was on to try to run me over. Only he didn't try. He did. He had one of those really low-riding cars and ran me up under his car halfway. I was pinned down by the bumper and I couldn't get out. Someone else in the church had seen this and came running out to yell and scream about the situation. I yelled at them to call the police while he was yelling at me about being in sin. The woman called the police out, and they arrested the guy for running me over with his car, and had to jack the car up in the front to get me out from underneath the bumper. I wasn't hurt, just a few sidewalk scrapes on my knees and arms. He was hit with attempted vehicular manslaughter and sued by my parents. I developed a strange fear of cars coming at me from behind. I have no clue where that came from in the least, but at least I wasn't severely hurt in that incident. With all the preaching that he did about being a good person, he turned into one of the worst ones. I guess it's always the holier-than-thou people usually turn out to be the absolute worst ones. After he went away, I wasn't bothered again on my way home. I don't know the details of the sentence he got or what kind of jail he went to because I was too young to understand all that and how it worked. I hope that if he got out, his church turned their backs on him. I'm a very small girl at 24 and I was coming out of a bar at around 2 a.m. My friends had all left me there because I was being stupid and wanting to stay longer. I told them that I would get a taxi back home later. At around 2 a.m. when the bar closed, I walked out of the bar talking to this guy that was pretty cool. He offered to give me a ride home, but seeing as he was a stranger, I really didn't think it was that great of an idea. In hindsight, I should have realized that getting into a taxi with a complete stranger was just as bad as getting a ride from someone you don't know because it's exactly the same thing. So I called a taxi, and I waited around till 3 a.m. for the guy to get there. Everyone had left, the bar had closed, and the whole street was dark and quiet. Every now and then, a guy on a bike would ride by, but that's about it. I felt almost like the guy wasn't coming. At long last, the taxi pulled up down the street as I was trying to distract myself from being out on a dead street in the middle of the night thumbing through old pictures on my phone. The taxi pulled up, and the driver was an older man who looked like he had just crawled out of bed. I got in the back seat of his car, after a creepy small exchange. 
I knew there was something off about him because he rolled up with this really nasty look on his face. I asked him if he was my taxi, and he said just to get in. It was one of those yellow taxi cabs. When I got in the back seat, I immediately felt how tired I was and fought off the extreme need to fall asleep when in the car. I'd be on the road for the next hour. I started to regret not going home with my friends when they wanted to leave. I kind of sat there in the back seat on edge because this guy was silent after the only thing he said to me was get in. I daydreamed a little bit while trying to stay awake. I don't know how long we were driving for, but the guy was going in some direction, I don't really know. I was a little buzzed. I finally felt like we were taking forever to get where we were going, so I checked the time. It was around 4am. I was suddenly awake and my heart started pounding out of nowhere. I tried to calmly ask him where we were and he said we were headed in the complete opposite direction where we needed to go. I needed to go north and we were headed south for some reason. We traveled so far out of the way that I wasn't getting home before the sun came up. I told him he was going in the wrong direction, and he told me he was going towards the address I gave him. I could clearly see the GPS telling him to go the other way. I called that out, and he said that he knew where he was going. I argued about it with him, and that's when he pulled over to the side of the highway and told me to get out of his car. I complied because I was getting scared that he might do something. Also, he couldn't drive straight to save his life. Getting out of the car was a pretty regrettable mistake because it was super dark and there wasn't anyone anywhere. He drove off and I pulled out my phone to call anyone I could. No one answered the phone. I was stuck in the middle of a highway with nothing but forest on either side of me for as long as I could see. I walked for hours after that. The sun had come up, my phone was dead and it was around midday when I finally reached some place that had a phone. I'd been dropped off about 80 miles away from where I had originally started. My friend who was with me at the bar the previous night had answered the phone finally and left to come get me. It turns out that my call never went through to anyone. That's why they didn't answer. My friend came and got me and I fell asleep finally. When we got back home, she had to wake me up because I was just so tired, and just the act of arriving didn't do anything. You know that whole thing when you fall asleep in a car. Nothing will wake you, but you always wake up when you arrive for some reason. My friend has a theory that the guy kidnapped me, and ran off in a direction opposite to where I told him on purpose. I don't know why he told me to get out, and then stranded me in the middle of nowhere though but it was the worst feeling I'd ever had. I'm glad I ended up safe at home that day, but that could have gotten so much more wrong. I do still wonder what would have happened to me had we gone all the way to where he was going. Maybe he was just trying to strand me out there, and that was his whole plan. I really don't know. I really need to get my own car and not get any more rides from taxis. That was the scare of a lifetime. And I might not have been here to tell this story today had that gone any worse. Back when I was in high school in the late 2000s, there was a neckbeard creep that no one liked because of something he did that he thought was funny. Just a little bit about me, I'm a male and I hated being touched. Much like anyone else, I didn't want my ass touched. I hope that's understandable. I mean, what a terrible person I was then, right? So this little bastard's name was Aaron, and he was as conceited as could be. He was so conceited that he got it in his head that he could stick his fingers in someone's ass, and they'd just laugh and have a good time with him. He found out quickly that nobody liked it. So call him a weeaboo or a neckbeard, either fits. He had an obsession with anime particularly a newer show at the time called Naruto. To my knowledge, there was a Japanese culture-only prank called Kancho, where one would make finger guns with both hands and then shove it up someone's ass. 
Not sure why this was even a thing. It was gross. Over here in America, you'd probably get your head kicked in at some point doing that. Aaron introduced himself in the most bloat-headed way by wedging into conversations and telling people his name, saying that he was so great that the gods gave him the first name in the alphabet. Nobody was impressed. He started pulling that concho prank on people he considered his friends. The problem was that none of us considered him a friend because he was really annoying and cringy. He conchoed me, and I turned around and hit him. He thought I was just playing, but I was very much serious when I got him in the face and made his nose leak. He tried it on a few of the girls, and they all banded together and complained about him to the school staff. There was a huge office meeting with him and several of us that the staff called in. They were all asked as a group if we felt that he needed to be kicked out of school, and we all said no. We just wanted him to leave us all alone. He was disciplined by the staff for the moment, and that was that. He didn't bother us for most of what was left for the school year. He just kind of kept quiet and to himself like a dog that was scolded. It was pleasant. When the school year ended and we all went on summer break, I'm sure everyone like me forgot about him. We just went on about our lives without him. When school let back in, Aaron was there as well as doing his cringy usual things. It's almost like the summer gave him a recharge on being annoying and cringy. Towards the beginning of the year, someone had already had enough of his shit and backhanded him in front of a bunch of people who laughed. He was humiliated and ran away like a weeb. Later on that same week, he started angry outbursting at people for merely getting in his way. It was kind of funny at first, though. Someone accidentally bumped into him, and he sprang into action and took some fighting stance that he saw in some anime that would give anyone watching secondhand embarrassment. After a few of these little outbursts, he started telling random people that he was going to shoot some of us. I'm not going to lie, it did scare me to hear about this, even though I wasn't one of the targets. The things like this weren't happening all over the place just yet. That would be a few years later. But the fear among us was real. I guess the staff of the school caught on to these threats and expelled him from the school, but also got him some mental help. I believe he needed it as well, since he wasn't mentally healthy to begin with. It's almost like his parents were never around or sheltered him or something. I've seen many people along my way in school that mostly act like him and the only social skills they get is through whatever anime they watch before meeting their first person outside their family. It's sad that there are people in the world like this, but if you're not careful around them, they'll outburst and threaten you because they don't have filters or boundaries, because they either don't care or don't know. Aaron didn't care. I heard Aaron was sent to another school where he would have to reset getting to know people, but that's all I know. After his last incident at the school I went to, that was pretty much the end of it, I guess. Thankfully, before he decided to try some shit, the school caught on and did something about it. This wasn't one of the schools to ignore threats. Here's the kicker. This happened in Florida. I have always had trouble dating as all my relationships end in utter defeat. As bad as they are, though, I'm someone who can't stay single for the life of me. It's a real problem. My first relationship started just after high school. It was one of the tamest breakups too. This girl's name was Tiffany, and we'd met each other outside of school and eventually got together. Nothing too bad went on in that relationship, except the constant running around she did. She was oblivious to what she was doing, and what a relationship really meant. She'd make fun of me for getting jealous, like I wasn't supposed to feel that way for her spending more time with anyone else. I decided to break it off after a few months of this. I couldn't take it anymore. She would constantly rush off and be with other guys, and tell me that I'm being controlling when I told her it made me feel like she didn't like me anymore. Once that relationship ended, I didn't date until I was out of high school. 
I finished up sad and lonely. So after high school, there were a few girls I went through. The first one was after I got kicked out of my parents' house for being 18. I had a girl move in with me to my first apartment and help with bills. We ended up sleeping together and eventually dating. It came on quick and it felt natural. Her name was Mary and she was a very sarcastic person. I lived with her for a long time and really got close to her. She'd constantly pick on me for being sensitive to her jokes. She'd make a joke like she's got other guys lined up ready to take her away and tell other people that I'm small. It was really uncomfortable. She finally said this in front of everyone I know, and everyone she knows, and I got tired of it. I blew up on her at home, and she acted like I was doing something wrong. She got mad at me for defending myself, and when I told her I was tired of her making fun of me and spreading lies about me, she called me a pussy and said I was being too sensitive. I'm sorry if I can't take one insult after another. She moved out of my apartment, and I fell into a depression after that. The place started piling up with trash and clothing everywhere. I stopped really taking care of myself, and things just got really bad. I talked to a friend for therapy, and somehow got over myself and got back to near normal. He even helped me come over and clean my nasty place. I started getting desperate a little bit later, and I heard about a dating app called Tinder. Tinder felt like a golden opportunity to get a real date with no strings attached. Maybe it would have been if I knew what to look for. I was stupid and would take anyone. I got on the app and I found a girl that I liked. She was cool and she wanted me to meet up with her after talking for a few days. So for all I knew, she could have been a crazy person. But I didn't care, or so much as think about that. I made plans with her to meet up at a local bar. She was absolutely late, and made me wait around the bar for an hour before she showed up. I didn't mind that at the time, but she did this all the time. I dated this one, which I forgot about her name for about six months. She was cute and great to be around, but I couldn't handle her being late all the time, and the problems that caused, or just standing me up altogether, because something else was more important than the plans we had. She could have at least told me that she was standing me up all the time. But instead, I'd sit there long enough to know that she wasn't just going to be late. She wouldn't be coming at all. I'd had enough of that, and I got back on Tinder. I decided I'd give it back to her and not even tell her that I was breaking up with her. She'd find out when I didn't talk to her anymore. I believe that was pretty fitting given the situation. The next Tinder date messaged me and asked me out. She was actually everything I was looking for in a girl. She wasn't mean and abusive. She did exactly what she said she was going to do. And she didn't have plans to ruin me. She had her own place and was renting for another year before her agreement was up. We'd seen each other for about a year before we started having problems, and it was because she started getting distant. I found out why, though, because she had told one of my friends through Facebook that she only loved me for what I was going to have later on. I was completely broken when I saw this. Basically, her plan was that she was going to get with me, and then when my parents died, and I get my inheritance, she'd be rich. I don't know how she found out that I even had that coming, which I don't want that time to ever come, but what she didn't know was I wasn't going to be getting much of anything. My parents were humble people in what they had, and didn't have super high paying jobs, hence why they kicked me out at 18. I heard all the time that I was a lazy 16-year-old who didn't have a job to help support. This isn't what that story is, though. So I showed her the messages I had from her, and told her if she was going to be looking to get rich off me, she'd be sadly mistaken. She disappeared shortly after that and stopped talking to me. She blocked me on social media, and that was that pretty much. 
I still see her from time to time around, and she still gives me dirty looks like I did something wrong. The next girl I dated from Tinder was someone who decided her only personality was whatever anime she'd watched the day before. I thought it was cool that she watched anime as well, but even three weeks of this got really tiring. She'd always pick the most annoying character to imitate. As if that wasn't enough, she made me really uncomfortable because she would act like a third her age and make some really fucked up jokes about it. Needless to say, she didn't work out at all. The last and final girl I dated pushed her way in. Tinder really fucked this one up matching us up. So as soon as I messaged her a few weeks after meeting her, she was in distress, or what she made it seem like. She told me that her ex had kicked her out, and she needed to get off the streets. Red flag number one should have been when I picked her up. She came out of the house with her bags already packed after hearing yelling inside. I didn't put two and two together and figure this out. The stress of helping someone out got to me and clouded my judgment. I didn't even think to say anything when she put her kid in the car. I drove her back to my house and she immediately made herself right at home. In the coming months, she never got a job. Her kid was allowed to do whatever he wanted and destroy the house, and the bills started piling up. She just sat on her ass and ate. I asked her many times to get out and get a job, and she refused, saying that she couldn't. I asked her one day to leave, and she wouldn't. At this point, I wasn't with her anymore, but for some reason, she didn't believe that I didn't want to be with her anymore. I tried my best to keep the peace but she would always make up something out of thin air to bitch at me about. No wonder her ex was kicking her out when I met her. I had to borrow money from a friend to get her out because I was told I had to evict her. After she was finally gone, I was more broken than I'd ever been. My parents were more oddly supportive as they had never really been before now. They told me that if I wanted to come back and live with them that I could. I decided not to. I wasn't going to put myself in the position of potentially getting kicked out yet again. I have been alone ever since. I brought a dude into the house to help me pay bills and get ahead, but we have a rule that as long as we're living there together, we won't be bringing girls home. Tinder is now off the table for me forever. I'll deal with the crazies around my area that I find in real life not the ones I find on a website that are potentially even more crazy. I never thought I'd find somebody on Tinder like this guy. This was almost too much, but I'd been in really bad relationships before, but this was somewhat of a different story. I met up with a guy named Tim who called himself Rainbow after talking to him for a little while. No clue why he called himself that, but I figured it out and I'll tell you in a bit. After the horrific toxic relationship that I had just gotten out of, this guy was a fresh breath of air. He was overly nice and constantly showered me with affection as well as having a poeticness to his words. He didn't let off that he was a total neckbeard, but I would find that out much later. I've always given people the chance to be a great person, but that hasn't gotten me very far. Once I met up with him in real life, it was almost like he knew how far to go with the cringy corny stuff before I started to feel uncomfortable, and then he'd back off of it. I seriously think he's had a lot of experience doing this. The outings were typical, but he acted like a medieval prince here and there. I just thought at the time he was joking to make it awkward when he did it, but after a while, I knew he meant it for real. This was my first encounter with someone who does this type of thing and thinks it's not weird. Before I caught on to who he really was, I ended up at his house. He invited me over, and he told me that he lived there alone. I was wondering why we skipped the house tour and went straight to the back of the house, into a room that looked like a storage closet. 
It was pretty big, but there were things packed into the room very tightly, and it was a complete mess. There were just random things in corners against walls that looked like they hadn't been touched since he moved into the place. I started to get a little uncomfortable being there, but I didn't let that stop me from just hanging out with someone I was thinking about dating. Maybe it would have just been fine. He told me to sit on the bed, which was literally the only place that I could get without climbing over stuff and possibly getting hurt or breaking something. There was so much stuff to look at, so I just didn't. He told me that he'd be back in a few minutes, and he left into the other room. He came back a few minutes later, and I almost couldn't hold back the laughter. I knew this had to be a joke, but either he was really good at acting, or he was serious. He'd taken off his pants, and he put a shirt on that read, My other kitchen is my bathroom. All he had to do was lift up his shirt for me to start laughing. I couldn't hold it any longer, and I was almost vomiting from it. While he was gone, I did notice a few things in the room that I kind of wish I hadn't. It was pretty dark in the room, so I initially didn't see it. But he had posters and toys all over the room of a blue pony with wings. That's honestly what started the real laughter. I had to look it up later, but I know now why he calls himself Rainbow. So when my laughter finally died down, I said between my tears that I was sorry about that and I told him I had to go. He begged me not to, using the term fair maiden, but I told him this isn't what I wanted. I started to walk through the house and I was stopped near the front door. It wasn't Tim that stopped me, but what I assumed to be his dad. He called me an intruder and pinned me against the wall. I wasn't laughing anymore. I was terrified. Tim didn't come to save me in this situation. He just stayed in the room I'm guessing he spent more time in than actually talking to other people. The guy asked me what I was doing in his house and pulled a knife out of his back pocket and put it against my throat. I started crying and I told him Tim invited me in and I was leaving. He called Tim into the room to confirm, and Tim told him that he had never seen me before. I went through so many emotions in that little amount of time that I just broke. How can someone be so stupid? I told him his son's name and he had to call him from the other room to confirm. So the guy walked me over to the door with the knife still out and told me to get out. I ran when he opened the door and never went back. Tim blocked me on everything we talked on, and I didn't hear from him again. But I needed to know one last thing. Before you try to follow in my footsteps, please do not Google this. You've been warned. The reason why he called himself Rainbow was because of the posters I saw on his wall were of a show called My Little Pony, and there's a character of a blue pony called Rainbow Dash. The reason why I tell you not to Google it is because there's so much I didn't need to see. As for his dad, I assume, he didn't seem like he was a very bright person much past his son. Tim lied to me and told me that he lived there alone, which I didn't appreciate. If he had told me the truth, I would have introduced myself to his dad and not had the whole knife thing happen to me. I really do hope that Tin finds the right girl that doesn't think he's a neckbeard. But that's not really going to be possible these days, is it? If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind you?